So in the previous lecture, we were trying to understand the relation between symmetry and chemical bonding. So in this lecture, let us continue that discussion and see uh, what are the two uh, most popular theories which describe chemical bonding. So we'll go to lecture 36 and we will continue our discussion of symmetry and chemical bonding. So bonding can be described by, again, this you must have already read in your first or second year of BSc. So it's valence bond theory. And second is molecular orbital theory. So this is also denoted as VB and then this one is as MO theory. So now let us discuss first the valence bond theory and then we will also we will try to use a symmetry arguments to develop the bonding wave functions in valence bond theory. Okay. So let us discuss what are the salient features of valence bond theory. So basically it is an extension of extension of Lewis idea of bond formation through sharing of electrons, right? So electrons are shared to form a bond, then electron sharing is presumed to be localized. localized between the pair of atoms which are interacting to form the bond. Then what is the next point? It's the orbital interaction and the bond linkages. So there is a strong in correlation between orbital interaction and bonding linkages. So this is only to refresh the previous lectures which you must have read about valence bond theory and that is in a diatomic or a polyatomic molecule. Right? And then electron density between the pair of atoms is described by a new wave function which is the product of the of the wave functions of two interacting orbitals and fifth is shape of the molecule how do you define the shape of the molecule the shape of the molecule is understood from Vesper theory. I am not going to go into details of what that is. That is, uh, we will just briefly say on the basis of minimization of electronic repulsion. and consideration of atomic sizes. Alright, and I think the last point is electron density mm -hmm. 
between pair of atoms associated with a bond is the result of effective overlap of appropriately oriented so this is very important that they must be appropriately oriented because then only they will be able to define the shape of the molecule right atomic orbitals and this is where the problem is because atomic orbitals are oriented along cartesian coordinates and they do not generally orient as per the shape of the molecule we can say leading to a particular length and strength of a bond so why this is required so consider that uh, you have atomic orbitals uh, which you want to overlap or interact with other atomic orbitals and then resulting into a given shape of the molecule right so now this is not always these atomic orbitals are as i said not always oriented along the shape of the molecule so so we can say now the need of appropriately oriented atomic orbitals consistent with the molecular shape consistent with the molecular shape is difficult this is because atomic orbitals are oriented along the cartesian axis along the cartesian axis and not with respect to molecular shape and thus effective overlap is not possible so let us consider a case of uh, carbon so the electronic configuration of carbon can be understood as 1s2 2s2 2p2 right so now i am trying to form bond between ch4 we know that the shape of the molecule is tetrahedral so that means all four bonds all four ch bonds must be equivalent now if four hydrogen bonds come with four s orbitals then the combination happens between this s orbital and the empty p orbitals so now all the bonds form will not be same if we just combine atomic orbitals of carbon with atomic orbitals of hydrogen right so hydrogen has uh, 1s1 right so these are not effective overlap and this will not intuitively lead to a tetrahedral shape so then now what do we do where uh, what is the solution for this so linus pauling actually came up with solution and he proposed hybrid orbitals like we have have learnt that how carbon is sp3 hybridized in ch4 right so carbon is sp3 hybridized leading to a tetrahedral shape and carbon is sp3 hybridized or sp2 in other molecules or sp hybridized in other molecules right 
so there is a concept of hybridization where atomic orbitals mix and match leading to formation of hybrid orbitals which are now equal in energy and thus they interact with the atomic orbitals of uh, hydrogen leading to formation of tetrahedral shape right so we can say that the hybrid orbitals the hybrid orbitals are best for explaining or for describing the bonding and the molecular shape of CH4 whereas atomic orbitals of carbon are best to describe a single carbon atom right so this we can understood now so let us now see how symmetry and group theory arguments can be used to develop what atomic orbitals can be mixed to give you a hybrid orbit okay which will satisfy the tetrahedral shape of the molecule all right so let's go there so let us start with with four tetrahedral tetrahedrally oriented equivalent hybrid orbitals so we start with the assumption that these hybrid orbitals exist and we will represent them with vectors psi1 psi2 psi3 psi4 let us see so for a tetrahedral i am going to draw a cube because then it will be easier to understand and the center of the cube is the atom and then you have four hybrid orbitals which are now represented by the arrows right now these arrows are oriented as a tetrahedral right so this angle will be the standard 109 degree 28 minutes between these now let us represent them with psi1 psi2 psi3 psi4 okay so now here we are assuming that these orbitals are already existing orbitals exist and thus they will form bases of for a representation in td point group right so now let us create representation under td point group so this is my td point group and i am going to write the operations classified into different classes e 8 c 3 3 c 2 and i have 6 s 4 and 6 sigma d's right now tau for size psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 now we will use the same rule where we'll say that upon carrying out a symmetry operation if none of these change then they will contribute to trace or if any of this will change then it will not contribute towards the trace so then e will have a trace of 
each of the C3 will have a trace of so only one of the psi1 or psi2 will not change because that will be the C3 axis. So I will say 1, C2 everything will change, so 0, S4 everything will change, so 0, sigma d2 will not change, right? All right. So now if I use reduction formula, use reduction formula to reduce tau psi and this will result into a1 plus t2. So now we know that we have four hybrid orbitals which give us the representation as tau psi. Tau psi upon reduction gives me a1 plus t2, right? Now a1 is the totally symmetric representation. a1 is totally symmetric representation. This means that a1 has same symmetry as that of s orbital right it can be 1s as well as 2s both of them will have same symmetry s orbital now what about t2 so t2 if we look at the character table so from character table we see that x y and z jointly form the basis of t2 that means that i can say px py pz orbitals will have t2 symmetry now if we also see that xz this is again from character table yz and uh, zx they will also form basis for so this comes from the unit vector transformation and this comes from the binary products okay so this is from unit vectors and this comes from binary products. Binary products as the basis, right? So this tells you that dxy, dyz, and dzx orbitals will have T2 symmetry. Okay, now there is a confusion between what to combine. Okay, so 1s orbitals cannot combine with, so we can say, let us say what we have. So we have principal quantum number as 1s2, then we have 2s2 and 2p2. So we have 2s orbital here and 2px, 2py, 2pz orbital here. Then we have 3s orbital which is empty, 3p orbital which is empty and 3d orbital, right? I mean, there is no point considering combination of 3d orbital with 2s orbital because there will be a lot of difference in the energy, right? This will be very high in energy, so you cannot combine this with this. Now, similarly, this s and this p cannot be combined. So we only have to combine s and p or s and d orbital because a1 has s symmetry and t2 has either px py pz or dxy dyz dzx symmetry so either you can combine see this combination is meaningless because there is no electron in that right so if we are trying to combine so this does not work so if you are trying to combine this this also does not work if you are trying to combine this, this also does not work. The only combination possible is the 
only this also does not work right possible combination is 2s and 2p orbitals right so we have 1s orbital and 3p orbitals which can now combine to give you four hybrid orbitals psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 right so now if we apply projection operator so apply projection operator so i'm not going to go into the complete calculation you should be well versed with this now so if we apply projection operator i'll have to do p a 1 on to psi 1 right this will give me psi 1 plus psi 2 plus psi 3 plus psi 4 right and then upon normalization you can say that this will be half so similarly if i do p t2 on psi 1 you will see that i am leaving this exercise for you to do it at home so you will get 3 psi 1 minus psi 2 minus psi 3 minus psi 4 right so what are the other two orbitals so if we now try to do it for psi 2 you will get the similar combination with 3 psi 2 minus psi 1 minus psi 3 minus psi 4 again so they will not be orthogonal to each other this and this let us call this as phi 1 and phi 2 so these two are let us say this is phi 1 this is phi 2 okay so phi 1 and phi 2 are orthogonal so you can take the dot product and take the summation over all size and it does go to zero but the other phi's which you will get upon projecting out onto psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 will not be orthogonal to each other so now what to do here so if we carefully see this is actually instead of a combination of four psi orbitals we have what we have is three here and three here so six psi orbitals are interacting with each other so right that is not a favorable case because you have more than expected orbitals. so now if you see that this can be broken down into linear combination of three independent orbitals so psi 1 minus psi 2 minus psi 3 plus psi 4 psi 1 psi 1 plus psi 2 minus psi 3 minus psi 4 and minus psi 2 plus psi 3 minus psi 4 right so if you take this summation you will get this back so now i can call these as phi 2 phi 3 and phi 4 and not this one so now if you see that these are orthogonal to each other as well as orthogonal to this one so two positives and two negatives so these will these two will be orthogonal and then here if you see that there again there are two positives and two negatives so this will also be orthogonal so you can test it out now if we see that this one has a symmetry so phi 1 has a symmetry of s orbital so i can equate the symmetry and i can say that this is my half psi 1 plus psi 2 plus psi 3 plus psi 4 right similarly i can say px py and pz will have symmetries corresponding to rest of the three phi's 1 by 2 so psi 1 minus psi 2 psi 3 plus psi 4 then i have psi 1 plus psi 2 minus psi 3 minus psi 4 then i have psi 1 minus psi 2 
plus psi 3 minus psi 4. Now, if I try to write this in matrix form, I can always say S, P, X, P, Y, P, Z is equal to psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, right? And this will be my half I can take out side. This is 1, 1, 1, 1. 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, right? So, now if I want to write in terms of psi, what are the combinations of s and p orbitals? So, I can always say that psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4 is equal to half, 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 minus half, minus half, plus half, and the inverse of this. So, this is so on. So, you can write the rest of the components. So, you have S, P, X, P, Y, P, Z, right? I can always say that. Now, this implies, so I can write psi 1 is equal to, if I expand this, take this inverse, I can always write this as psi 1 is equal to S plus P, X plus P, Y plus P, Z. Psi 2 is S minus P, X minus P, Y plus P, Z. Psi 3 as S plus Px minus Py minus Pz. Psi 4 as S minus Px plus Py and minus Pz. Okay? So, now you have expressed the hybrid orbitals. which you assume to start with that they exist in terms of atomic orbitals, right? Now, you know the symmetry of these orbitals. From there, you have now deduced that what atomic orbitals should combine to give you four hybrid orbitals, which will be oriented along in a tetrahedral fashion. So that you can combine now these size with the hydrogen atomic orbitals, right? So now if we want the formation of the bonds, so you can express those bonds in terms of psi 1 into 1s1, psi 2 into 1s1 of A, B, psi 3, 1s C, psi 4. 1 is D, right? These are the hydrogen atomic orbitals and these are the carbon hybrid orbitals, right? So, using this, you can form four bonds which will now define the correct molecular shape, right? So, this is an example of uh, how valence symmetry and group theory can be used for to explain bonding under valence bond approach, right? So, now in the next class, we will go forward with this chemical bonding and we'll look at the localized and delocalized molecular orbital picture and how symmetry and group theory can be used to describe bonding in those cases. All right. That is all for today. Thank you. Thank you.